Α περάσουμε τώρα στο επόμενο μα θέμα, το οποίο αφορά στην τέχνη. Η κάμερα του Hellenic TV και οι συνεργάτε μα βρέθηκαν στο θέατρο τέχνη του Λονδίνου, προσκεκλημένοι από τον διευθυντή του θεάτρου, κ. Γιώργο Βιενίου. Η παράσταση με τίτλο Oedipus King, που ανέβηκε στο θέατρο τέχνη σε σκηνοθεσία Γιώργο Ευγενίου και μετάφραση Don Taylor. Η παράσταση παρουσιάστηκε από τι 15 έω τι 18 Ιανουαρίου με μεγάλη επιτυχία στο θέατρο τέχνη του Λονδίνου. Συμμετείχαν ηθοποιοί Lee Hughes, Joanna Pop, Πάνο Σαββίδη, Vic Zander, Clayton Black, Robert Wade, Andrew Endiborg, Aurelie Frewa, Φίλιππο Δημητρίου, Rose Lamy, Magdalena Stefani και Thomas Whitcomb. Εδώ να αναφέρουμε ότι η παράσταση Βασιλιά Ιδίποδα βασίστηκε στην αρχαία τραγωδία και το αριστούργημα του Σοφοκλή, όπου πρώτο παρουσιάστηκε γύρω στα 429 π.Χ. Στο βίντεο που ακολουθεί θα σα παρουσιάσουμε αποσπάσματα από την αρχαία τραγωδία. Himself, his friends, or his family ignores these offers, and then later plan to be sheltering anyone or himself. On that man, I pass sentence already. No matter who he is, I endless forbid anyone to speak with or give shelter to that man in this city or in the country under my rule. No man shall pray with him, make sacrifice with him, or even land to wash in his house. Everyone will kick him out of the doors as the perpetrator of this horrible crime that brings this suffering on our city. Now, according to the prophetic word of Apollo, as revealed to me by the Delphic oracles, I stand here as the champion of the gods and the dead king too. And the man himself, the murderer, with all solemnity I curse him, no matter where he acts alone or with others to bear the mark of his crime to the end of his life, without friends, homeless, <coughs> and in misery. I will not go further. I don't even exclude myself. If no only I should shelter this criminal in any house or half of mine, then let the curse I have uttered fall on me as fiercely as upon anyone. 
Now this is my sentence. And it's up to you, all of you, to see this finally carried out. For your sake, for my sake, and for the sake of this plague-ridden, God-deserted city. To be honest with you, I am surprised that no purification ceremonies or investigations were undertaken when so excellent a king as Lias was inexplicably murdered. Even in fact, the God's commands actually been looked into, I would have thought. Now, however, I am king. I enjoy Lias' title. His bed and his wife. She is a kind of common ground between us. And his children, indeed, if he'd had me, he'd it up a bottom, sharing them up with my own. But Lias, he is the sad victim of this tragedy. And this link between us and my feelings for the man make me determined to fight for him now, as if he were my own father. Nothing will be too much trouble to carry tonight, this is the story of Lias. And Lias was the heir to Lanticus and all the ancient kings of Thebes, back to Cadmus and Agnor, and his father too. If any man here dares to ignore these orders, may the God's curse have fallen into. Barren earth, barren cattle, barren wife, and all the horrors that this suffering city daily endures without mercy to the end of his life. But the honest people of these, those of you who follow me in intention and action, well, make justice to the others, and the gods help us today and every day. This curse frightens any man, Grand King of Thieves, and it terrifies me. I'm not a chill Let me say that at once. Second Apollo, ask this question. He, if anyone, should give us an answer. Well, I don't doubt that. If any man here can tell me how to persuade the God to speak, when the God doesn't want to, I shall thank him for it. There may be another thing worth saying. Though second best, admittedly. Second best, third best. So to think any man's opinion is worth hearing at a time like this. The prophet. He has knowledge. knowledge, inside, experience. He more than anyone can help us now. Which is why I've said it already. Nothing, my friends, has been overlooked. Creole suggested. I sent him twice. He expected him here some time ago. There were rumors, of course. Gossip in the marketplace. Rumors, what rumors? You must tell me everything. There are travelers. They killed somewhere on the road. I've heard that already. But when you're cursed, we may public, someone may come for words, and it would take a brave man to keep silent. No murderer fears words when he has a stomach for murder. Here comes the man that sees out the truth. The blind shaman, Hydrisius. He sees into the hearts of all things and has solved more mysteries than any living man. Tyrus, you have made yourself a master of all the arts of understanding, both mystic symbolism and practice. The highest spiritual truths, the most stand worth material reality to be your prophets. You see the faith of us, not your eyes alone, but with your insight. But we rely on you as our spiritual child. Look, we sent the old people, we should have heard that already. And the answer would be to find out the killers of the old king, to execute, to abolish them, and only then your city be clean. So much true. We need your talents now. We know that the formation of birds in flight, and with many other omens, ready to meet the future. So, for your sake, for my sake, and for the sake of this city, he help us to end this death curse. A dead man walks in our streets, and he blinds us with a shadow of in your hand. A gifted man puts his gifts to bed, chooses to in the service of his fellow men. <laughs> Jesus, wisdom, but all that leads to suffering. I knew this before I could have been foolishly forgotten. I should have stayed at home. That's what I'm doing now. So what's that supposed to mean? Please, let me go. Things will be best that way. You will build your boat, and I will build mine. Just you to ask my question. Hmm? It's a feed your country of all here. I've heard your proclamation, it's misconceived. So it's best for me to keep silent. Dear God! Do you mean you know you won't say? Look, all around you, the whole city are imploring you to speak. Don't you see? That's because you are all blind to what I can see. I can't tell you. The truth is painful, my secret I do. You do know, don't you? You're holding back. You prepared to watch the whole country die? 
I'm saving you from agony and myself. Don't ask me again. Don't waste your time. I shall tell you nothing. Nothing? What kind of monster are you? A stone statue you to carry, much less a man. Do you mean this? You're really prepared to say nothing? You lose your temper. Make me your scapegoat when it's your own hand that you should play. Do you hear him? Hmm? What is mine saying? It's an insult to the state. Every decent citizen will be outraged. I can't change the future, only describe it. What will happen will happen whatever I say. It's your duty to say what you know. If you must come, you must tell me. Lose your temper. Shout, stamp if it pleases you. I shall say nothing more. Oh, yes, I'm angry. I'm more than angry. I understand this much. I understand that you are implicated. Maybe you didn't plan this murder. Did everything that acted. And I've done that too, my pity for the lives to see you, Victor. Would I be indeed? You compelled me to speak. The truth you proclaimed is never upon <coughs> your head. From today, never to speak to me or anyone. You are the man, the unclean thing, the doctor breeds disease. You dare to choose me? You slander me in public and think your fortune telling gives you some kind of immunity. I don't need it. The truth is it's all protected. Then, uh, then only you would know if he's lying or telling you the truth, not I! I might permit you to interrogate you. Why not? I've got nothing to hide. You'll never do this murder on me. Are you married to my sister? Of course I am. What kind of question is that I do have that honour? She shares both title and revenue. Of course she does, but mine is hers. Am I the third partner? Do I have my equal power and responsibility? You've always had it! All the more disgusting of you to conspire against me behind my back. Well, I haven't conspired against you. Ask yourself, as I ask myself, whether the same man will willingly exchange a quiet life within the ruling family for the wear and tear, the grueling responsibility of government. It's never crossed my mind. I have no ambition to be a king in name or in fact. I live like a king. And sometimes I hope I act like one. That's enough. No sensible man should ask for more. If I had your job, there'd be too many things I would like doing, and no more satisfaction from the kingship itself than I get from royal rank without any royal obligation. I'm not so drunk with the prospect of power as to envy a position that yields no profit. Look at me! Everyone knows me. Everyone loves me! I think. If anybody hopes to get your attention first, has to get mine, because my influence guarantees success. <coughs> Why should I give up such a favourable position? Am I such a fool to break with you in such conditions? As far as to commit treason as a political policy, it has nothing to recommend it. It's not my policy, not that of, not even that of any of my friends, not if I know them. If you want proof, send to the priests at Europe. Check the message I brought. Produce some evidence of conspiracy between the blind man and me. Prove that. Then condemn it to death. Out of hand. In those conditions, my verdict will be as merciless as any man's. But to condemn me like this on mere suspicion without any evidence, that I cannot endure. It's unjust to condemn innocent people if mere supposition unsupported is the only evidence that you have that you can call bad men, honest and decent, honourable citizens, crooks and villains, then justice will be done to none of them. A reliable friend is a worthy possession. Throw away friendship and you destroy something living and irreplaceable. The truth of this will emerge in time. Time is the one incorruptible judge. One minute is long enough to accuse a man. To prove his innocence takes much longer. If you weigh, if you weigh his words, they make a good sense. Why work? Prudence, many consideration. Quick judgments are not always the wisest. Conspiracies don't take their time. They keep on the road. And counterintelligence must move fast to what we call nothing. Shall I sit here, do nothing, while he takes power and my own sluggishness destroys me? What do you want from me then, eh? To have me banished? Banished? Oh no! I'm already dead! What have I done? Try to show him 
saying that. You still say I said it's still pretending. Yes, because you don't think he's right. I know you're right, just like. What about my insurance? You're a traitor. You're mistaken. You didn't just make decisions. You're a wrong decision. You didn't just make decisions. You didn't just make decisions. You didn't just make decisions. Princess! You didn't just make decisions. Just 
responsible. I'll hold them and jam my teeth with that. Kindness and generosity could do no more. I'm grasping my hands, remembering and imagining I still had time to see them one more time before I'd go. I can hear something. Are they crying? You show pity, Creon, and problems to me. I'm asked to dare with my, my children. You pull them to me. I know you love them. And you love them still, it's part of everything. And then you have better luck. There's a king and a man than I have had. The girls come to me. And take me easy. me. These are your father's hands and your brother's. And the hands have blinded me, the words blind or ill already of the truth. And no, I knew nothing. As I fathered you on my own mother, only your wife. My eyes, they could only see you, but they cry. And they do when I think. What hard times you will have in the world, the official things people will say. Holidays, festivals, no fun for you. They will be crying at home alone while the others enjoy themselves. Lisa, when you're old enough to be married, what man be brave or foolhardy enough to take you on? And that scandalous reputation will stick to my children, my children's children. She spread it. Those girls. There's this. That's the sort of thing people will say. And who will take you on under those circumstances? No one. That's all. Oh, Virginity and Baron is all you have to look forward to. So, Creon. Menoikis was your father. And you must look after the nearest and nearest kin. The two of us have brought them into the world. They're dead now, or dead to them, to have any. They're quite. They're quite alone. So don't let them wander, husbandless and homeless, and don't condemn them the same punishment falls on me. They're very young. They're very poor now. And without you, quite without. Promise me. And take my hand upon the promise. Good brother. The girls, if you are able to understand such things, I could tell you more, but that will do for now. So when you say your prayers, pray for peace. So let's go home to a better life than your father is here. That's enough. No more crying in public. It's time you went in. No, just a moment longer, even against your better judgment. No. The proper thing done at the proper time. <laughs> On what condition that I have no promise? What promise? Just send me to exile. Of course we'll do that. I shall follow the instructions. No. Don't let me go there. Don't the guards hate me. If they hate you, though. Throw you out. Do I have a word? Will you do as I say? No. I shall do what I said I would do. Yeah. I'm in your hands. <coughs> Very well then. You stay here, but the girls no. are inside. No! No, not the girls! <coughs> not the girls! No! Don't take it away from me! Don't give Don't me do me. that! No! Who no. just brought you to this? Where are they? No! no. no.
Citizens of Thebes, inheritors of our great city. You have all seen Oedipus the king, or Didamus. Who saw the riddle, the she monster sank, and by his genius saved the state. Whose fame for that deed was so great. No man, just envy him. Like a tidal wave of disasters that swept him to his grave. Judge no man's life until he's dead. There's no winner until the race is run. No man fortunate or free from pain. Till he lies in his last everlasting bed. And when the earth covers his head. head. Μετά το τέλος της παράστασης εμφανίστηκε και ο Διευθυντής του Θεάτρου Τέχνης και σκηνοθέτης της παράστασης, κ. Ευγενίου, ο οποίος αφοσιώθηκε 62 ολόκληρα χρόνια στο Θέατρο Τέχνης και το διεύθυνε πάξια σε πολύ δύσκολες εποχές με σκοπό να προσφέρει πολλά σε Ελληνοκύπριους από τότε μέχρι σήμερα. Ας παρακολουθήσουμε τι είπε ο βετεράνος τοπίος, συγγραφέας και Διευθυντής του Θεάτρου, κ. Γιώργος Ευγενίου. Two thousand five hundred years ago, to warn the humankind against charismatic leaders the like of Oedipus, and yet human race has not learned that lesson. <laughs> We still have people like Erdogan, like Trump, like Boris Johnson, the charismatic leaders who are ambitious, megalomaniac, hubris, arrogance. We must stop that. That is the voice of Sophocles. And he brought this tonight here to you. Thank you for coming. international tour to spread the message to the human race we must stop these charismatic leaders leading us to wars, destruction. It's the humankind that can do that. Us. Thank you. Good night. Ολόκληρη την θεατρική παράσταση θα σας την παρουσιάσουμε προσεχώς στην εκπομπή με το φακό τη Χελένικ TV.